Hi guys, it's Michelle and today's video is a very exciting video. I'm very scared about it because stuff like this really freaks me out. So today's video is going to be the most haunted places on earth. So these are some of the most haunted places. I get so scared of shit like this, I'm not gonna lie. Either way, I'm excited to film this video because I have really interesting places that I actually want to visit in the future, I think would be pretty cool. Let me know if you guys think it would be an interesting video once quarantine is over to go to any of these places and like record a video there. I don't know, stuff like this does freak me out a lot so it would be taking a lot out of me but I feel like it could be worth it honestly so let me know what you guys think. But let's get into some of the most haunted places on earth. So the first place we're going to be talking about is the Carl Beck house and it's in Ontario, Canada. It is kind of outside of Toronto and it is super creepy. This house was built in the 1800s and Carl Beck actually lived there with his entire family. Sadly, Carl's wife actually passed away and when she did, their eldest daughter, Mary, was the one who stepped in and really like took on the mother role and took care of her other siblings. And what's really sad is when Carl passed away, he evenly divided his estate between his kids, as most people do, except Mary was only left with one dollar. I mean, I know the value of a dollar was very different in the 1800s, but still, it was nothing compared to his estate and what he had and what the other siblings got, which is so crazy because literally, she did everything for her siblings and they, I don't know, just left her with one dollar. The legend has it that this really upset Mary and she is the person who is haunting the Carl Beck house. So obviously it was a mansion. Now the Carl Beck house exists as like kind of apartments that are listed on Airbnb. So I was thinking once Canada opens its borders to Americans again, which will probably be in a very long time, probably when there's a vaccine for coronavirus, would you guys be interested in that? Because I love Toronto and I had the most fun there. I literally... I think it'd be super interesting to go to this place because it looks creepy as fuck and you can stay there and it's pretty cheap to stay there, honestly. So would you guys be interested in that for another video? Because I think that'd be kind of cool to see if it's really haunted or not, but... I don't know. Guests who have stayed at this Airbnb since have reported seeing a man in a suit that they believe is Carl Beck, and then also seeing an angry woman in a dark blouse and skirt that a lot of people really do think is Mary, being upset that she was left with basically nothing. Which is really sad, honestly. I feel really bad for Mary, because I would, I would be so mad. Could you imagine? You like spend all this time taking care of your siblings, stepping up to the plate, like when your mom like passes away, like horrible situation and you just get nothing and your siblings get all the money like that's so mean also do your siblings take it because it's really mean if that's true this definitely goes down in history that i've seen as one of the most haunted places because the way that the guests have such similar stories to each other really freaks me out but that goes to show with a lot of these places it's never just one person having one experience it's usually multiple people who don't know each other reporting the same thing so the next haunted place on our list is in charleston south carolina and it is the dock street theater. I don't know if this is a theater kid thing or if it was just with my specific theater in high school, but like aren't all theaters like haunted? Like I feel like that's, there's always like a legend or a story that, about a theater being haunted. I don't know if it's just because theaters are generally kind of creepy and just pretty old, but this one definitely goes down in the books because it dates back very far. This theater in Charleston, South Carolina was actually originally the Planters Hotel that was constructed in 1809. For around 50 years, this hotel was completely abandoned and then in the 1930s, they decided to change it and make it a theater instead. So this theater still stands today and is known to have some of the most horrifying haunted stories surrounding it. So I would say generally people say that this place is pretty haunted, but more specifically, a lot of people have reported seeing a specific ghost or figure, whatever you want to call, of a woman in a red dress. Now a lot of the local people who live in Charleston claim that this ghost is the ghost of a woman named Nettie. So many people claim to see a woman in a red dress at this theater. Basically legend has it that Nettie is actually a person who existed in the 1800s in Charleston, South Carolina. She apparently was named Nettie Dickerson. She came to Charleston. She had a lot of ambition. She, she was very excited and she really, really wanted to get married. 
Now, unfortunately, Nettie was 25 years old, which in the 1800s was pretty old to be getting married at. So she was never really seen as the marriage type. No one would want to marry her because of her age just so messed up. So she got a job at the St. Philip's Church and she did really well at this job. She actually ended up becoming really close friends with the priest. But at the same time, Nettie just felt like she did not belong here. She didn't think that the church job was good for her. She always felt like everyone was judging her and she just didn't like it overall. So that is when she decided to take all of her money, go to the most expensive shop that she could find in Charleston and buy the most expensive dress in the store, which of course was a vibrant and gorgeous red dress. So this was when Nettie started working out of the Planters Hotel as a prostitute. And she just like felt like she was never accepted by the high society of Charleston, no matter how hard she tried. She was very frustrated and very fed up with it. And allegedly one day she was on a second floor balcony of the Planters Hotel and she was very, very upset because she, like I said, felt like she was never accepted by Charleston's high society. She was out on this balcony during a huge, huge thunderstorm. The priest who still really cared for Nettie was downstairs, like outside, looking up at her at the balcony and he was trying to talk to her being like, it's okay, like, we, like, I still like, care about you, it's gonna be fine. And Nettie was like, you can't save me. And then allegedly it was struck by lightning. That's just such a sad story with like a sad ending. But of course, like I said, the Planters Hotel ended up becoming the Dock Street Theater. And this is where so many people have claimed to see the ghost of Nettie. It's just really horrifying to think because I feel like if you see someone in a red dress, like you know you see someone in a red dress. It's a very eye-catching color. It's just really, really scary that so many people had the same story. It's like a known thing by the local people who live near this theater that this is just a ghost that just is there and it's just fully accepted the fact that it's very haunted and it sounds very scary although she doesn't sound sinister or anything so that's good now we're moving on to a bit of a more darker place this one's like actually really scary i kind of started with the more lighter things that maybe were ghosts that were not that mad or sad or whatever but yeah this one has been haunting me for like years this one scares me so much and i would like to say that i would go there for a video but like buzzfeed unsolved already did it and like i feel like i don't need to <laughs> and also i'm horrified and i would i just maybe i would island of the dolls a very horrifying place that we are going to talk about now so the island of the dolls is an island located just south of mexico city it has a absolutely horrifying history a man named don julian santana barrera left his family during the 1950s and basically just moved to this island that later became known as the island of the dolls so according to don not long after he moved to this island he discovered the body of a little girl floating in the the canal and then after he was really upset that he couldn't help the girl he couldn't save her he saw a doll floating in the canal and this doll he just assumed must have belonged to the little girl so in order to respect her he decided to hang the doll up on the island he started to feel very like haunted by the soul of this little girl that he couldn't save and to appease her soul he started to hang up different dolls like he would go and search for these old dolls and he would hang them up all over the island he soon began to realize that it was actually the dolls themselves that were possessed by little girls he claims that he wanted to like appease their spirits so much like like i said he started going out and finding dolls and hanging them up all over the entirety of the island like there are so many dolls hanging up on this island according to his close family and friends he seemed to be possessed by an unforeseen source because he completely completely like changed after he moved to that island. It was unexplainable and it was just so bizarre in the way that no one else could understand other than like I said an unforeseen force which is really really scary. So after 50 years of collecting dolls and hanging them on the island in 2001 his body was actually found in the canal and in the exact same place that he claimed that he found the little girl 50 years earlier. Which at that point I feel like I don't know how you would come up with an explanation for that. Like, like, obviously, I guess it could be coincidental, but it really does seem like something was doing this to him and making him feel like these dolls were actually, I can't even, I can't even say because it, it freaks me out so much, but like, I don't know, it's so scary. It is now a huge tourist attraction. Local people actually do believe that it is charmed and it is like very scary. It seems very haunted. I don't 
like it. It is probably one of the most scary places on this list. Honestly, the scariest that I've, I've ever heard of because it just makes me so uncomfortable. I like, I don't know, like, do you believe his story? Do you believe that he actually saw the body of a little girl floating in the canal and then the, like, obviously the doll like was actually there because he did hang up the doll. The doll is still there. I don't know. Like, what do you guys think is the truth about this? Like, I feel like there's no I hate, I hate when I have to say there's no other explanation when it is involved with stuff like this because it really does scare me. Like, what explanation would you have? Part of me would love to visit this because I think it'd be so interesting, but then the other part of me is absolutely horrified. So what do you guys think? <laughs> would you guys go visit the Island of the Dolls? I don't know, for, I, for some reason that one really freaks me out. I think because dolls kind of scare me in general and I'm just really not interested in you know, an island full of creepy ones. But either way, it was a super sad story. I hope that wherever he is, he is at peace. But a lot of local people think that his soul is also on the island um, in the dolls. So I actually am getting really creeped out. But like I said, I do really hope he is at peace. So the next haunting actually occurs in a famous hotel. Could you imagine if I was like the Tipton Hotel, sweet 613? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, it's a famous hotel in London. It is called the Langham Hotel and it seems terrifying. But I was thinking about it and obviously my friend Kira is from London and I feel like she's like pretty popular over there. I think that she could maybe pull some strings and get us to be able to book the exact room that people claim is the haunted room in this hotel. Uh, and maybe film a video there? If you guys would be interested in that, let me know. But also, we are both very scared, so like, keep that in mind. So the Langham Hotel was built in 1865, and since then it is known for having some of the most famous guests, like Mark Twain, Oscar Wilde, Napoleon III, like all of these people, many, many more, have stayed in this hotel over the years that it has been around. And apparently room 333 is very significant in the haunting of this place. Allegedly, a doctor murdered his wife and then murdered himself in this hotel. And it was in the Victorian era. And this is where, this is like, I guess the idea of who this ghost might be. So in 1973, a BBC announcer, James Alexander Gordon, was staying in room 333. He claims he woke up to a fluorescent ball just like hovering about two feet over the ground. And he was horrified, but then this ball, he kind of shaped into a human that he describes as a man with silver hair wearing Victorian era clothing. Gordon asked the figure what it wanted and it didn't say anything. It just stared blankly at him and then started coming at him with open arms. And I would literally lose my mind. Like I would cry like every day forever. I can't imagine. What's creepy about this is that other guests, several other guests have had so similar stories. Flashback to me being like, should we go stay there? Like, no, but maybe. In 2014, England's cricket team stayed there and one of the players stayed in room 333. Cricket player named Stuart Broad was the one who was staying in the famously haunted room. He claimed that the room was stiflingly hot and just overwhelming. Apparently he had such a frightening experience that he didn't really talk too much about, but he actually requested to change rooms because of it, which has happened a couple times actually. Another woman left in the middle of the freaking night because she was so horrified. She literally just checked out of the hotel and left, which would be my vibe, except for I would like cry first a lot. So a lot of people as well claim to see the ghost of Emperor Napoleon III in the basement of the hotel, which is interesting because he actually did live at the Langham Hotel in the last days of his exile, so it's a possibility that his soul would still be there haunting the place. <laughs> really wanted it. Next time I go to London, let's do it. So the last place on our list is a bit close to home, which I dislike a lot. <laughs> um, it's not that close to me personally, but it is in Florida and it is in St. Augustine. And it's the haunting of the lighthouse of St. Augustine, Florida. So the construction for this lighthouse actually began in 1871 and it took over three years to complete. The man who was the superintendent on the construction project of the lighthouse actually had two daughters who would come to the lighthouse and play around and hang out with their friends 
at this lighthouse construction site. And one day his two daughters and three of their friends were pushing each other around in this small rail car that was used for transporting supplies from the nearby pier to the lighthouse. And this was a game that they played a lot, and unfortunately, one day it went very wrong. On this one day, the wheels of the rail car were shifted. Essentially, the kids ended up falling off of the pier um, into ice cold water. Unfortunately, the two daughters of the main construction worker in this project of the lighthouse and one of their friends actually drowned. Luckily, two of them were saved by a nearby construction worker who saw the whole thing happen. And it's just really, really sad and heartbreaking and so, like, scary to think but after the construction was done and this lighthouse was completed lots of people have reported hearing giggling of little girls and just seeing little shadows that were four feet tall running around at the lighthouse although these particular spirits are believed to be the daughters of the superintendent of the construction but these specific spirits don't seem to be like menacing or anything mean or evil according to the people who have seen them. However, there's also reports of seeing a man, and this figure to the people who saw was very terrifying. A lot of these sightings of this man were in the basement, which used to be the light keeper's home. This shadow figure is known for making the room smell like cigars, and making the visitors just feel generally very, very creeped out and scared by this. And what's really creepy is on an episode of Ghost Hunters in 2006, when they went to visit the St. Augustine lighthouse, there's like a dark shadow peering over them and it's very very creepy and all of a sudden they just it just vanishes like it's so freaking creepy Oof, it actually really freaks me out people started to ask like who is this man like who is haunting the lighthouse some people believe it is the ghost of a man named william russell who was the light keeper in the 1850s although russell was very passionate and protective over the lighthouse which is why people believe that he you know, wants to protect the lighthouse and that's why he has kind of like a scarier energy. He's not like the most likely person to be the person haunting according to legend. Most people think that it was actually another lighthouse keeper named Joseph Andrew. According to the legend, he suffered a fatal accident when he fell from the lighthouse in 1859. And it seems the majority of people believe that this is the man that's haunting the lighthouse to this day. What do you guys think was the scariest out of all of these places? I think a lot of them are actually haunted which is probably why I'm so freaked out right now. But what do you guys think? Do you guys ever be interested in watching a video of me visiting any of these places? Should I just like not get involved? I don't know. But that is it. If you guys like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think about these haunted places. And if you have ever been to any of these haunted places, please let me know and tell us your story in the comments below. But that is it. Make sure you follow me on Twitter, Snapchat, and Instagram because I'm always posting really dope ass shit on there. Subscribe for new videos every week and I will see you guys later. Bye.